We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So so what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. Hi, I'm Yue Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. This is the Dateable Podcast. Where we dive into everything about modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the show. Have you all been so hungry without brunch talk? (laughs) We're back. Is your stomach (laughs) growling so hard right now? No, it's been eating brunch for a month and a half. (laughs) Have you been protesting brunches? (laughs) Well, now we are back and you can resume your brunch plans. Brunch talk. Few, few. (laughs) It's back with a vengeance. Welcome to a brand new season of Brunch Talk, where we answer your dating questions about whatever you may be facing in dating, all your dating conundrums, or whatever's on your mind. These are all crowdsourced, and we try to answer as many as we can to the best of our ability. We use our own experiences as well as our observations from seven years of doing this damn podcast. We've (laughs) talked to many, many daters, and we've seen lots. Lots of behavior patterns. Yes, we have. And you know, in this off season, we have accumulated quite a bit of brunch talk entries, which is exciting. But that doesn't mean that you still can't send yours. So you can go to our website, submit your brunch talk questions. You can also DM us on Instagram at Datable Podcast. That's our handle. So go there, DM us. We love the questions. Keep them coming. And don't worry if you think, oh, maybe they've already covered this. It feels like such a simple question. Send it anyway. Yes. Because a lot of the questions are different variations. Again, we try to make these questions, when we reread them, we try to generalize them more so it can apply to more of you. But send in those questions and we'll be sure to answer them. But I have the missing brunch talk. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> there was actually some questions in the off season that I was like, could I make this into a brunch talk? <laughs> could I ask us a question? A could I ask us? Talk? I know, like when a friend will ask you something and you're like, 
hmm, let me uh, put this away as a topic. <laughs> yeah, right. Asking for a friend always. <laughs> There's always something that comes up. You know, when we talk to people about our podcast, I feel like the number one question is always like, do you ever run out of topics? Do you ever run out of things to say? No. No. It's always something new. Always. It is quite amazing when you think about it. Because seven years... You know, I think the other thing that's interesting is we always think that we're alone in what we're going through. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love these two is send it in. Probably a hundred other people are feeling the exact same way. I just made that number up. It might be way more than a hundred people, but a <laughs> hundred million people. Hundred million people, but someone is feeling the same way. I think that is absolutely for sure. This is also just to get a little deeper about this. It's us as humans. It's that a lot of times we think we come up with these unique ideas and unique thoughts. Fortunately and unfortunately, no, none of our <laughs> thoughts are actually unique because your thoughts are based on what you've seen and what you've heard, what you've learned. So it's already been out there in the universe. I guess it's like the socks as a content creator because you're never coming up with something super unique. But as a person going through a problem, just know that you are going through this because it's been out there before. Yeah. Other people are going through it. And it's okay sometimes not to know what to do in a situation. Yeah. And even you and I, there are times in our personal lives that we're like, fuck, what do we do? You know, like it's yeah. easier to dwell out advice than when you're in the thick of it. So remember that as you're sending them in, there's there's no like nothing wrong that you can solve this yourself. Sometimes it's just getting other perspective and that will help you see the light of how you can approach something. That's the key word, perspective. We're not here yeah. to offer one and done solutions. We're just offering you perspective so we can have a nice discussion about what's going on and hopefully you can see things a little differently. Yeah. Like we all can. So that being said, shall we get into this <laughs> week's topic? Because it's a good one. When we saw this one come through, we're like, oh yeah, we've dealt with this. This is a challenging one because I've certainly dealt with this myself. The question is, any advice on dating someone who values their alone time? And for more context, what this listener wrote in, she values her well-being and wants to get the solitary nourishment of her soul that she needs, like dancing, yoga, etc. But at times I feel neglected, left out, and not a priority. How should I go about this imbalance in our relationship? This is what happens when you bring two strangers together because you spend your time differently. And then when you're yes. trying to have a life together, some of these imbalances are going to be revealed and that is totally okay. To you, you might be thinking she's spending a lot of alone time. To her, she's just doing the normal time alone by herself, right? Everything is relative. This is why I think it's so important that when you first start dating someone, or even if you're years into a relationship, is you always have a sit down and ask, what is our ideal time mm -hmm. spent with each other, alone, and with friends? There is a good compromise in every relationship of how you do that. But if you just let people live their lives in a relationship like they've always done in the past when they were single, you're going to come across these conflicts and these conflicts have to be addressed right away. She might actually even think she's cutting back. She's like, oh man, like, I get oh. no alone time anymore. I mean, I definitely am guilty of that. Like, I feel like I'm cutting back, but sometimes it's still not enough. So having the conversation with your partner is so key. I think another big piece is like, how do you define quality time? Mm -hmm. Because people define that differently. Like, I know one of the things I struggle with is when I'm sitting on the couch with my partner, to me, that's not us like having time together. Right. So I'm like, oh, it's okay if I do work. But he views that more as time together. Mm -hmm. So how do you like get on the same page of that? And what we've figured out is like we need to make more compromise of, okay, this is a night that we're going to be like together. Mm -hmm. and maybe that's us watching TV. Maybe it's us doing something else. But I know Tuesday, for instance, is the night that I'm not going to be working because we're going to give each other mm. that undivided attention. But Monday or Wednesday, I might need some alone time. He might need some alone time. That's okay. So how do you start to like make it a little more clear? And I know that sounds like unsexy, but I think having that parameter around it can reduce a lot of this misunderstanding. If you can communicate 
what you use your time for and why it's important to you, your partner will be more in the know. And in this circumstance, I think it's almost better to first be curious, what does this alone time provide for you? Mm -hmm. The yoga, the dancing, whatever that may be you're doing alone, what does it provide for you? Why do you prefer to do that alone? Or would you be open to doing some of that with me? I would also like to partake in these things that you really love that feeds your soul. I want to be part of that too. And then you start drawing lines and you start negotiating with each other. Maybe she'll say, oh, actually, I would love for you to do a yoga class with me. That would be really fun. Yeah. But the dance thing, I'm going to do dancing alone, right? I really need to just dance like nobody's watching. I just want to let go. Great. That's a great compromise. Getting curious about why and how they spend their time is really important. And I like how you said, Julie, it's like how you view quality time could be very different too. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to be on the same page of when we are doing this, that's quality time. When we are doing that, that's it's not quality of time. We're just coexisting together. So then when you divvy up your time throughout the week, you can say, actually, we're spending less quality time together. How can we increase that so that we're fulfilling both of our needs and nourishing our souls together and then less time of just that coexisting? Yeah, and I absolutely think this listener should express the feeling of neglect because I'm sure his partner does not yeah. want him to feel that way. But that on the other side of it, he also needs to recognize her needs too. Because if she's just sacrificing all of her hobbies and alone time, then that's not going to make a happy partnership either. So how no. do you find what works for both of you? And I love that idea you had, UA, of like, are there some activities you can do together? Are there some that are better off apart. You sent me this episode that Jay Shetty did about just like, mm -hmm. it was like seven keys to a successful relationship. I forget what the exact title was. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. But one of them was time allocation. That was like one of my biggest takeaways from it. Every couple's different. I'll caveat that you should figure out what works for you. But he said for him and like a good rule of thumb balance was like two together nights, one together night with mutual friends, one alone night, completely alone, and then one night with individual friends. And that's only five nights, so I'm missing two. <laughs> so I guess the other two are for you to figure out what works good for you. Maybe it was three nights together. I don't know. You have to kind of figure out what the balance is. But he really brought up that having that alone time is really important to nourish yourself alone time time with solely yourself and then alone time with your own friends that have nothing to do with your partner. But then mm -hmm. also the benefits of being with other couples or other friends, like that adds a new dynamic. And he also talked about just like, how do you find activities that are new to both of you? Mm -hmm. So you're learning together and continuing because a lot of times in relationships, we tend to like take, oh, this is what I did. This is what you did. Let's like now expose one another to that. And that's totally important. But how do you also find some new things you can do together? And this is why it's so important to discuss the why instead of making these assumptions. Mm -hmm. We assume like sometimes if someone's like, I'm going to hang out with my friends tonight, you're not invited. Yeah. You could assume like, oh, is this person mad at me or do they want time away from me? And then you're on pins and needles when they actually just want to spend some time with their friend. I encountered this at the beginning of COVID when my partner and I found ourselves living together without intentionally discussing it because it was just the circumstances. And he said, I really could use some time apart. Oh, yeah. And I took that, remember, and I, yeah, I do. flipped the fuck out. I was like. I see you can get all the time you want because I'm going to move back to my apartment and I'm not going to see you anymore. Because to me, I was like, oh, he doesn't want to be around me. Right? He's pushing me away. Yeah. I assume that. Also, the way he communicated that was how I interpreted it. Later, when we cool down and <laughs> I spent the weekend away from him, like I was like, like he asked. But really, I was resentful that whole weekend. But when things settled down and we talked, his idea of spending time apart was not like, let's move out of the space that we live together. But how about we start involving each other in our individual lives and our hobbies because during COVID, everything was blended. So how can we have more of that mm -hmm. divide so I can learn from you, you can learn from me? 
But ultimately, what he wanted was that we share more of the household duties. That's what it was. He felt like I was a guest in his home and that he had to take care of me. But we were sharing a home together during COVID, and I was not taking on some of those domestic responsibilities. You have to keep digging. You have to keep digging. And it manifests in such weird ways of how people communicate. But maybe what they're saying is actually not what they intentionally meant. <laughs> the why, why, why. You Three just whys. keep digging deeper, and then you'll actually figure out what the real need is. Before we keep going into this, let's hold that thought for a quick message. This episode is brought to you by the One Love Foundation. The numbers of people affected by relationship abuse are startling. Abusive relationships rarely start with physical abuse. Instead, there are often red flags like manipulation, isolation, belittling, and volatility. Do you know the signs? One Love Foundation, a national nonprofit dedicated to ending relationship abuse, empowers you to see the signs of an unhealthy relationship before things go too far. Visit joinonelove.org and learn to spot the signs of unhealthy and healthy relationship behaviors. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATABLE at ViaHemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use the code DATABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. So head to OseaMalibu.com and use the code DATABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with, share them in social, Super excited to see what you end up choosing. Living with ADHD can be a challenge, and dating with ADHD is definitely a challenge. We've heard many of you say, but finding the right care and proper tools needed to succeed can be life changing. Done is an online ADHD care platform that can get you all the resources you need to help manage your ADHD online visits, refills, and a 24 7 care team made for you. In just one minute, Done's online assessment can help kickstart your ADHD treatment journey. With experienced clinicians, worry fill refills, and online visits, you can start getting personalized care as soon as today or tomorrow. So contact an expert team that can help you around the clock and get a personalized treatment plan just for you. Here's how you do it. Take a free one-minute assessment and book an appointment with a licensed ADHD clinician as soon as the next day. Get continuous care, one-click refills, insurance coverage, and 24-7 care team support with Done for just $79 a month. And pharmacy co-pays as low as $0. Visit get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. That's get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. Done. Turn ADHD into your strength. 
something interesting came up for me recently. Like my partner and I had been traveling for two weeks over the holidays. So we've been doing a lot. And I was going to go out with one of my friends when we got back. And I remember just being like, like, because I knew he didn't have plans. And like, typically we spend Saturday nights together. So it was something that like, he wanted to include him. I didn't want it to like leave him alone per se, because he didn't mm-hmm. have alternative plans. But as soon as I said it, he was like, I need the time alone. <laughs> like, I would love for you to go out with your friends and I could just chill myself on the couch and then yep. come home and you could see me then. And it opened up a lot for me because I think there's also this feeling of sometimes people have differing levels of alone time. If you're extremely extroverted, you might not realize that someone actually thrives in that alone time. Mm -hmm. And you almost are like solving this problem that doesn't need to be solved in the first place. So that was pretty eye opening for me. I'm glad that he communicated that too, right? I think that's really hard to do sometimes. People in a relationship feel like when someone wants alone time, it means I don't want to be with you. That's how you translate it. Yeah. And it just means the alone time helps you to experience something on your own. And then when you come back together, you have more to talk about. You can share what you experience. It could improve your quality time together. Absolutely. By spending that alone time. Yeah. And my partner actually made this comment when we were in New York, we stayed at my aunt and uncle's house. And he noticed that all day they did their own things. Like yeah. they were in totally different rooms. <laughs> yes. Doing their own thing. And then we reconvened for dinner time and they were yep. super like enthusiastic and excited to see each other. And it doesn't mean that you don't have a good relationship. You're not spending every waking hour together. Right. In fact, it actually can improve your relationship if you're getting rejuvenated and you're getting that downtime that you need. So it's a good thing. Alone time is a good thing, but it is a conversation to be had. And while we're focused on people in relationships, even if you're in the beginning stages of dating, this can be such a great conversation to have, even on a first date. How do you like to spend your time when you're in a relationship? Yeah. What's your ideal allocation of time? And what does alone time mean to you? What do you do when you're doing your alone time in a relationship? It reveals a lot about someone. I think we also need to think about like what's sustainable for the long haul too. Because at the beginning of a relationship, of course you want to spend every waking moment together. Yeah. I definitely have had some friends like this. I like purposely was not this person, but you know how like some people will just completely disappear from their friend group when they first meet someone and then they come back months later and it (laughs) actually could be a sign that things are maybe healthier later on when they're able to rebalance their lives a bit more. Mm -hmm. And there is that initial dopamine and excitement of being with someone new. So we're not going to say like, don't expect that ever to happen. But if you're actually going to spend like 30, 40, 50 years with someone, you need to figure out this balance because your whole life is not your relationship. And that's not to diminish your relationship. It just means that you're more of a well-rounded person than that. And let's lean into this idea of neglect. If you are on the receiving end and you feel neglected by your partner because they are spending some alone time or even time away from you, like with their friends, why are you feeling neglected? I can guarantee you it's probably because you don't understand why they're spending their time that way. And you're jumping to conclusions or making these assumptions. Again, your feelings are valid. They are true. You should communicate that, but at the same time, make an effort to understand how the two of you can come to a compromise. I've definitely felt the neglect. I've been in relationships where a partner doesn't communicate that they're going out on a Saturday night, Yeah, right? (laughs) And then you're not invited, and they do hang out with their friends. And then what happens? You don't know what what time they're coming back, when you're going to hear from them again. It's the unknowing that drives people crazy and brings me anxiety makes me feel neglected and deprioritized. It just calls for a conversation. Yeah. Because I realize I have the same issue in a relationship. I don't always update my partner on what's going on in my head. So what I assume he already knows doesn't necessarily mean that he already knows. 
And look, you also need to look at your own situation too. I think there is a healthy amount of alone time that's sustainable for the long haul. But that being said, if you feel like you never see your partner, you never do the anything problem. together, you need to decide if this is the partnership you want. Yeah. And that being said, have the conversation, see if they can meet you and hear you. I think that conversation is really going to be indicative to the future of this relationship. For sure. If someone hears you and they see that you feel neglected and they want to make it work. They want to see how they can still maintain some alone time and getting their needs met, but also meet your needs. That's a lot different than someone's just like, oh, this is what I do. This is how I live my life. Yeah. And you might find that this isn't the relationship for you. I think for me, I realized before I got into this relationship, after my last relationship, just being in a relationship wasn't enough. Like I wanted someone where our lives were intertwined. Yeah. And we were living day to day together and spending the majority of our time together. Like I like being with my friends, but I also like when my partner's with my friends and I'm with my partner. I don't think I'd want to have a relationship where I'm only doing my own thing all the time. Mm -hmm. At that point, you question like, why even be in a relationship? And there might be some people out there that love that. So it's really up to you and what works for you. But you need to find a partner that can meet you and is on the same page as you too. Yep. It absolutely has to be negotiated and can't be assumed. And there are also some ways, I think, if you are, let's say, living with someone, you can create space for mm -hmm. your partner. We just spoke to a friend of mine. He's been with his partner for six months. She just moved in. And instead of a man cave, she has a woman cave. And she goes in there, watches her Bravo shows, eats the yeah. snacks that she likes. And that's like her space, her time. He knows not to interrupt her. Even though they're in the same household, she can still carve out alone time for herself. So Alone time could mean so many different things. It could still be yeah. like you're in the same space. You just need some uninterrupted time by yourself. I think that is a fear of a lot of people of moving in together is losing that alone time. Yeah. But that is a big part of it. And maybe you don't have as much space as to have a set out cave for yourself. Like I know <laughs> for me, I live in a one bedroom apartment. But what I'll do is I'll take a walk myself. Yeah. You know, like there's yeah. other ways to figure out how to get that. Honestly, that's 10 minutes, 10 minutes minutes to a half an hour walk will do wonders for me. Yes. And my partner doesn't feel neglected. He's probably working or doing something, right? Right. And I think another piece of this too is how do you see the benefits for yourself? Like if you're in the place yeah. that you feel like, oh, this person's doing all their own stuff, what can you start doing that gives you joy that fills that space? Yes. One of my partner's friends, like her husband works a ton, like because he's in a residence just like works all the time. But she saw it as a benefit, like how much alone mm. time she had and how much time she had for herself. So it's all what you make it to be. And again, everyone has different needs. So it's also being honest about what you actually want in a partnership. But how could you, one, have the conversation, mm -hmm. see what good it can bring you, and then you decide, is this something that works or not? It's all a good thing. As long as you communicate, it's all a good thing. Hopefully that answers your question. For people who want to weigh in on this, have you found a good way to allocate your time in a partnership? Have you found a way to communicate how you want to allocate your time? Yeah. In the beginning of a relationship, share your thoughts, share your advice by tagging us on social media at Datable Podcast, or you can just email in the good old fashioned way, hello at datablepodcast.com. <laughs> and if you want to send in your brunch questions... Again, just email us, hello at datablepodcast.com or tag us at datablepodcast. Yeah, this was such a good one to kick off the new brunch season because I think whether you're single or in a relationship, it's totally applicable because we've heard so many single people say, I'm actually scared to be in a relationship because I'm used to this alone time. Mm, so yeah. everything is negotiable. In today's world, it's not one size fits all, which actually is a beautiful thing. It is. Many of the partners out there never want their partner to feel neglected. Mm. Or if they do, then it is the wrong relationship. So <laughs> Get the fuck how out. do you have the conversation and find what works for the two of you? You're building a life for yourself. That's beautiful. What do you think of it that way? Wrapping up this episode, we will see you all next week for another episode of Brunch Talk. See you next week. 
The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. So you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Thank you.